Have you ever wanted to beat Skyrim, but instead of doing all the fun stuff, like killing enemies with weapons and spells, you just let them hit you until they died? Well, that's what I did using the heavy armor perk Reflect Blows. I played on Adept difficulty and only used Reflect Blows to deal damage, with the exception of environmental kills. As for spells, I placed the additional restriction that I couldn't cast on enemies, except for Dragonrun. Also, some quests need you to shout at NPCs, so I didn't count those. Any race would do, but I chose High Elf because their large magic pool meant I could afford to put all my levels into health. I went straight into the keep, siding with Rayloth because he kills an Imperial officer. I took her armor and went back through the gate she came from. Then I used a bowl to clip out a bound so the game would teleport me ahead. This breaks the quest, so I was able to escape without much fighting. I picked up the mage stone and went straight to Bleakfall's barrow. I had to punch through some cobwebs to progress, but I didn't hit anyone, so it was fine. I blocked Arvel so the spider would kill him, allowing me to take the claw from his corpse. The Draugr overlord committed AI pathing, and I headed to Whiterun to give the dragonstone to Farangar. At the western watchtower, all the guards ended up dying, so I lured some giants over to take care of Myrmanir. I quickly realized my mistake, but got past them somehow, and made my way up the 732 steps. Once I learned Whirlwind Sprint, I was on my way. To start dealing damage, I needed to unlock the Reflect Blows perk, which meant I had to get my heavy armor to level 100. I did this by grinding gold at Yorlin's merchant chest, then training with Eastron until level 90, pickpocketing back as much gold as I could. The White Run guards helped me get to level 95, and then I went on a journey through East March to read all five heavy armor skill books. So how does Reflect Blows work? It has a 10% chance to deal the amount of damage that you took back at the enemy, ignoring their armor rating. This means that the damage the enemy takes is only affected by your own armor rating and difficulty. So my goal is to reduce my armor rating as much as possible to output the highest amount of damage. I started by equipping this pair of iron boots to disable the matching set bonus. That does reduce it a fair amount, but we can do even better. For some reason, the shrouded hood, robes, and gloves are all classed as armor, but have neither the heavy armor or light armor tags. This is good for us, because Reflect Blows only checks if the player is wearing armor in all four slots, and that none of it is light armor. So, if you equip the Shrouded Hood, Robes, and Gloves alongside the Iron Boots, you can reduce your armor rating to just 21. The problem here is actually getting the Shrouded Robes. Grella the Kind normally won't attack me, but I can get around this by casting Fury on her. Since she's not an enemy until I cast it on her, this doesn't break any rules. But once I get into the Abandoned Shack, it's a different story. None of the captives will attack me no matter what and Astrid has the Blade of Woe, which heals her more than I can hurt her. The key here is to replace Astrid's weapon using the Misdirection perk. You can't just give her an Iron Dagger though, she won't deal enough damage to kill herself. Since I was above level 30, I went to the Sacellum of Boethia to get a Blade of Sacrifice. Then I went back to the abandoned shack, swapping weapons with Astrid, and picked her pocket until she caught me. Whenever I ran out of magicka, I stood behind this bed to recharge. Once her health gets low, she'll go into bleed out and recover a bit of HP. I almost thought the weapon I gave her wasn't strong enough, but then she power attacked me and died anyway. All that was left was to report her death to a guard and talk to Marrow in Dragonbridge. He sent me to the sanctuary, where I took the robes and left before Anbjorn killed me. Next, I joined the college and bought some better healing spells from Colette and started training my restoration to level 70. I strategically gave up at level 65, and went to Dim Hollow Crypt to rescue Serana instead. I ran out before she had the chance to kill anything, and since I discovered Castle Vokihar earlier, I fast-traveled there and became a vampire lord. 
This allowed me to use a glitch to equip multiple sets of armor, which I did mostly for aesthetic purposes. I wasn't able to get it to work with torso pieces for some reason, so for that I used a different glitch that I'll go into later. I decided that the ethereal crown would be the best headpiece to tie the look together, so I went to Arkenfams denying Katria's help, and got the ethereum shard at the end. The rest of the ethereum shards were easy enough to get, but problems began to arise at the forge. When I got there, Katria spawned and killed the bandits. She's registered as your follower at this point, so I reloaded and lured them away before Katria could spawn. Then some vampires took care of them. Unfortunately, the problems continue inside where you have to fight a few waves of automatons. And since you can't leave Katria behind, I tried. I was going to need something else to deal with this. So I put that on hold and went to Soul's time. The first thing I did was talk to Neloth so he'd go to Telmithrin, which is where I was going. On my way there, I stopped at Kulbjorn Barrow to invest in the excavation. When I arrived at Telmithrin, I talked to Talvis, went inside to talk to Neloth, and came back out to find Talvis' Ash Guardian. You have to kill this in order to buy spells from Talvis, but as of right now, I can't resist its attacks long enough to outlast it. So, I waited for Rallis' letter to arrive and went into Colbyorn Barrow. I then used a bucket to clip through this doorframe. Jumping off and holding to the right, I landed in some invisible water and swam up through the floor of the Black Book Room. I read the book, ran like hell, and picked up the secret of Arcana. After that, I went into Ben Kongareik to get a telekinesis tome. Now, to get my alteration to 100, I used Secret of Arcana, held an item with telekinesis, and fast traveled. I used the level up to train my restoration to 70 as well. Using the Necromage perk, the Atronach perk, and the Atronach stone, I reached 100% magic absorption. The tables had turned, and the Ash Guardian didn't stand a chance. All of his attacks refilled my magicka, so I spammed heals while he beat himself to death. Once it died, I bought the Ash Shell Tome from Talvis. This is like a paralyzed spell, but it lasts longer and the target can't be damaged while the effect is active. Back at the Ethereum Forge, I cast Ash Shell on Katria, but now the enemies were focusing on her instead of me. So I took a bucket out of my inventory to push her into the lava. She respawns throughout the fight, so I had to do that a few times. I made sure to keep the steam turned off because I learned that it heals the automatons. Forge Master did a good amount of damage, but his fire breath refilled my magicka enough that it wasn't an issue. I figured out that if you stand to the side of him, he'll do a turnaround attack more often, so I abused that to whittle down his health. With the ethereal crown in my possession, I figured it was time to update the wardrobe a bit. I went back to the abandoned shack to take the execution hoods from each of the prisoners. Like the shrouded hood, the execution hood has the head armor tag, but also has the heavy armor tag. To put on both, I got arrested, equipped the crown, escaped, turned myself in, and served my sentence. Perfect. I chose the Apprentice for my second stone. I went to Dawnstar and used the Khajiit Merchant Chest to farm soul gems and enchanted gear. I used these to level up enchanting, and once I got to 70, I put some decent enchantments on my gear to make my restoration spells very cheap. Then I quit without saving and forgot to enchant them again. And now I was finally ready to go through the main quest. At Ustengrav, I witnessed the full extent of 100% Absorption's power, and Delphine did most of the work against Salokneer. I would have used a bucket to get into the Thalmor Embassy, but I wanted to see what it was like to sneak in as a High Elf. 
It didn't work, so I ran through and grabbed all the documents. I didn't feel like waiting for all the guards to kill themselves until I got a key, so I spent about 10 minutes trying to clip through the front gate. Kept on going, running through Skyhaven Temple to reach the wall, I asked Parthenax about Dragonrend. He told me I could learn more in an Elder Scroll, so I borrowed one from the dwarves. I read it, as you do with any old fragment of creation, and when the vision ended, Alduin was right on top of us. I spammed Dragonrend until he was low, and sat in front of him while healing. His own meteors probably dealt more damage to him than I did, but he was defeated all the same. I sat through the Peace Council and rode to Skuldafit where I jumped up the side of the mountain to skip the dungeon. I spammed the Interact button on the staff to skip Nocreen, because I couldn't kill him even if I wanted to. Sun was a very hard hitter, but he only needs to lose about half his health to let you through. Wasn't long before Alduin came for the final fight. Here, I had to prevent the Sovngarde heroes from landing the final blow on Alduin, as that will put him into a bleed out state. He won't attack me in bleed out, and I need him to attack me in order to kill him. So I had to keep the heroes stunned for the latter half of the fight. The meteors were frustrating because they would push the heroes towards Alduin, and he would target them instead of me. In these cases, I had to use a bucket to move them away and regain his aggro. Meteors can also put him into bleed out, so when his health got low, I save scummed and reloaded until he died off me. Teach you to cross me. 